Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing a major transformation on my friend Ali Yost. I'm sure you guys already know who that is. She is basically a TikTok queen. I will leave her TikTok and her Instagram down below. Make sure you give her a follow. She's the sweetest person ever. But um, in today's video, I'm going to be transforming her from this blonde balayage to a really nice kind of chocolatey brown dimensional color. It is so beautiful, you guys. I cannot wait to show you. So as you guys can see, she usually does a really bright um, face framing like money piece and then we do just like a level like eight nine balayage all the way around with the root melt so also if you guys are interested on watching this transformation let's just go ahead and jump in before I do start, I just froze the frame right here because I do want to talk about something real quick. I know a lot of people are going to ask why I didn't fill the hair or why I wouldn't in this situation. And there are two reasons why. Number one being because the last time that I did her balayage, I actually did add low lights in there. So it did tone her down quite a bit to this level like eight. And then number two is also because she already has those really warm tones in there. Had she come in with a super icy platinum, you know, solid blonde, then I would fill her of course. But in this situation, she does have a lot of her natural throughout and a lot of low lights throughout, as you guys will see when I start to low light her hair. Um, so I wasn't really worried about filling the hair prior to going in with that dark color. And it's also the fact that her hair is a lot warmer toned. So like I said, if it was icy and platinum, this would be a completely different story. But I'm just going with whatever this scenario is currently in front of me. I am starting with Redken Shades EQ and the formula that I'm using is one and a half ounces of 4N, one ounce of 5N, and a half ounce of 6G. Now the reason I like to add that 6G in there is obviously because she is bright. We don't want her to get too muddy. She definitely didn't want a super like warm brown. She just wanted that perfect kind of chocolatey brown that was like neutral, but you don't want to get too muddy since she is blonde and we're going darker. So I'm going to use that 6G in there just to really make sure that it doesn't go like green or blue or anything like that. And the reason I like to use Shades EQ whenever I'm going from a blonde balayage or a blonde to going darker is because I feel like it's a little unnecessary to go straight into permanent unless you know the client is going to keep it for a couple years just because it is so incredibly difficult to remove permanent color and it's so damaging as well, especially whenever there's blonde underneath that permanent color. Um, you guys know how tough it is to get it out. So I like to use that Shades EQ just because I know that it's going to be just super shiny, super healthy. And then of course, if they wanna go back to blonde, it's a heck of a lot easier than it is to remove permanent color. So what I'm doing right here is just dividing the front and the back of the head. I like to section out the back with the headband section just to get it out of my way while I'm working on the front. So when I'm doing the front of her hair, I like to section out where that money piece would be just because I feel like that needs to be kind of focused on a little differently and foiled a little differently than the sides of her head and the rest of her hair. So I like to section that out and do that last. And I'm going to do horizontal foils all the way up the sides of her head. Now, as far as these foils go, I am going to be doing a very thick weave. And then I'm going to be leaving out very minimal amounts of hair between these foils. And the reason I'm doing this technique is because Ali specifically said she wanted to be just a smidge darker than her natural color. And as you guys can see, her natural is about a level five. So I wanted to mix that level four in there just to kind of deepen it up, but just make it a little bit more rich. And then she also wanted a very subtle dimension with that dark brown color too. So she she didn't want it a flat, just dark brown. She wanted just that little subtle pop, not necessarily a blonde, but just some sort of dimension. And Allie has always had a really bright money piece. I feel like that's kind of what she's known for. And I honestly love it on her. So I made sure to leave out those front sections for that reason, um, because I really wanted to focus on that later on and just make sure that we're not darkening her front too much because I feel like when blondes go brown, they kind of freak out a little bit um, and it's a little kind of intimidating as well. So I like to focus on that later, which is what I'll explain when we get to that part. But that is the reason why we're just leaving little minimal amounts of hair between that, but doing the chunkier weave. <music>
So after I get done on one side of the head, I'm obviously just going to repeat these exact same steps on the other side by sectioning out about an inch section on the front where her money piece is, clipping that away, and then doing horizontal foils all the way up to her part. So I just repeated those exact same steps on the other side of her head and now I'm on the back side. So what I'm doing is sectioning off where her hair starts to get super blonde and I'm going to just start ping ponging foils back and forth and just going from the left side to the right side doing those exact same thicker weaves leaving out minimal hair in between. We kind of gradually go from like super blonde in the front to a little bit more dimensional in the back naturally with her balayage. So we don't do too many foils here in the back as much as we do in the front, but that totally just depends on how blonde your client is as well. So that's just personally why you guys see me doing a little bit less foils back here than I do on the front. So now I'm moving on to the front hairline money piece section and I kind of blocked this whole view so I am so sorry for that. It's so hard to film and do the, like the perfect angle because I'm the only one here. So it's like I, my tripod is the only thing that can hold the camera and I don't have someone constantly like filming around me. So what I'm going to do is just do like a medium weave not a super chunky or very thick one but I'm just going to do like a medium normal weave in the front. And what I'm going to do with the dark color is I'm only going to bring it halfway down of that first foil. So I'm going to leave out the very ends of her hair and just bring it down like two inches just so that way it kind of gradually goes from a little bit more dimensional and like brighter in the front to a little bit darker in the back if that makes sense. So every foil that I do after this first one I am going to go all the way down to the ends of her hair. So you guys can see I kind of like feathered that in and folding that up. And then I'm going to do two more foils on this money piece. And those two foils with the kind of medium baby weaves are going to be all the way down to the ends of her hair. So now on the side sections on that hairline, I'm going to push away those foils that we did horizontally and I'm actually only going to do one foil here and that foil is going to have the low light go all the way down to the ends of the hair. So on that top portion, I actually had more hair there than I did on this side section. Um, so this one's just going to do one foil and then on the other side, I'll do one foil as well.
So now I'm mixing up a completely different formula and this one I'm putting in a bottle just for an easier application. This is going to be for the hair that's left out of all the foils. So I'm using a one and a half ounce of 7NB, one ounce of 6G, a half ounce of 8GI, and a half ounce of 8N. Now I like to add a bunch of these golden tones in there just because whenever the hair does rinse out from the dark color onto the lighter tones, I feel like it tends to grab a little bit more ashy and muddy. So in order to prevent it from going muddy, you're gonna wanna have those golden tones in there. Um, but again, she didn't wanna be super golden at the same time. So I kinda had to counteract it in the right way um, without adding like copper tones, if that makes sense. So. So just a little tip, if you guys are wanting to do something similar but using different levels, just make sure that the second formula that you mix up is two to three shades lighter, but nothing more than that if you're wanting subtle dimension. So if you have a client that has like a level two um, as the darkest color and then you want a subtle pop of dimension, then I would kind of go with like a five and not so much with like an eight. So that way it's not so contrasting on the hair and you just have that subtle pop, almost like a sunkissed shade. Um. So now what I'm going to be doing with that second formula is basically covering everything that was left out of those foils. So I'm going to just go a little section by section to make sure that everything is fully saturated just by putting a little bit on the palm of my hand and kind of running it through the mids and ends, which is where the blonde starts and ends. So you guys will see that I'm just kind of taking a little bit on the palm of my hand and just kind of fully saturating it and then flipping it over the foil and moving on to the next one. So once you are done with each section, Section, what I recommend doing is just putting a little bit more of that formula um, right where it's like the blondest parts on the ends and just fully saturating it once again with everything kind of smushed together if that makes sense you guys will see once I get to the end of this section how I just fully saturate everything whenever it's all pulled down together. So now that I repeated the same exact steps on the other side, I'm moving on to the back of her head. So again, just fully saturating everything that you see outside of the foil that has the blonde parts. And then once I'm done with everything, I move on to those front sections. So once everything was fully saturated, I let her sit for about 20 minutes and then I went to shampoo her out. Now in the shampoo bowl, I did have a lot of that toner left over. So I just did like an all over toner glossing with that same exact leftover formula. And I feel like that just kind of seals everything in, make sure everything is nice and even and also helps longevity as well. So I made sure to just leave that in for 10 minutes at the shampoo bowl. And, and then I just rinsed, shampooed and conditioned like normal.
And I, of course, forgot to film the haircut, which I feel like a lot of people were asking her what she gets done. And normally we do a blunt cut because she does have shorter hair and she likes that look. But now that she's growing it out, we actually just did like a half inch on the very ends of her hair. And then I went in with texturizing shears to take that weight line out so it wasn't too blunt for her. But she did want um, kind of like face framing layers and like that curtain bang style, but like the long curtain bangs. So I did give her some face framing and curtain bangs as well. And then I styled her out, which I'll show you. And I love the way that it looked. For her styling today, I used my tried and true babyless one inch curling iron. It's my favorite for messy beachy waves and to get those ultra beachy messy textured waves, I like to alternate the curls. So I like to do some of the curls away from her face and then alternating towards her face. All right, you guys, so this is the final look. As you guys can see, this is the perfect neutral chocolate brown with just a slight dimension to it. And I love that little face framing pop. It's like the littlest baby subtle pop and it is so cute. I absolutely love this color on her. It just really brings out her eyes. So make sure you guys go check out her TikTok. She did the cutest transformation TikTok ever. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what else you guys want to see down below and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye guys.